During my years in the Buffyverse fandom, I've noticed a trend of reviewers often advising fans to just get through Season 1, as this series will inevitably get better from there. The first season of the show is often dismissed and looked down upon, and is certainly not given the same critical acclaim as the later seasons, and I think that this is an oversight, and that the strengths of the season are far too overlooked. Strengths, which include a fun and strong horror vibe, decent characterization, which lays the foundation for future development, and a wildly entertaining main villain. Given the show's legacy and influence on female-driven media, and the praise it has received for its, admittedly tainted, feminist undertones, it's easy to forget that the series didn't start from any sort of empowerment angle, but rather from creator Joss Whedon watching a horror film and feeling sorry for the blonde victim of the killer, wondering what would happen if said victim actually turned around and fought the killer instead, the idea for Buffy the Vampire Slayer was born, and from the subversive idea came a solid premiere season, which had a lot of fun with its central idea. The subversive image of the tiny blonde fighting back starts with the opening scene of the season. We follow a young teenage couple as they break into an eerie empty high school. The camera follows them through the halls as the girl timidly asks if they should even be there, while her male companion reassures her that it's fine. It feels like a cliched, albeit well done, lead in, and then this happens. <laughs> and we quickly realize that we're in for a very different kind of show. This opening is still one of my favorite TV show openers, and it lays down the tone for the rest of the season, in particular the horror vibes which are filtered out over the rest of the series. While Buffy as a series is definitely rooted in horror, and later seasons still include some incredibly horror-driven episodes, such as Killed by Death from Season 2, or the classic episode Hush from Season 4, the show largely gravitates away from this angle after its second season, and becomes more of a supernatural drama with occasional horror elements. And this did end up working well for the series, and gave opportunities for character development and growth, as well as being able to expand on the universe as a whole. But there is something so wonderfully fun and almost nostalgic about the small-scale horror of the first season, and the way it leans into the horror genre far more than any of the other seasons. From its atmospheric and creepily fun score by Christoph Beck, to its cinematography and grittier look, and the way it plays with light and shadows. You can almost feel the fun that the writers and directors are having as they gleefully pan through darkened attics to bubbling cauldrons, or effectively use a dripping shower in an empty locker room to fully unsettling effect. Monsters appear in shadowy basements, and vampires stalk their prey down dark alleys. The whole season feels reminiscent of low-budget 90s horror movies and invokes an unsettling and eerie atmosphere, which makes a lot of scenes genuinely creepy something which does get lost in the later seasons. The first season also has a lot of fun playing around with and portraying horror cliches and homages, such as the aforementioned literal witch's cauldron, kitschy over-the-top monsters reminiscent of late 80s horror, and a central villain who was straight out of a classic Hammer horror film. And that brings me to The Master, the first big bad of the series. Played in a wonderfully hammy manner by Mark Metcalf, the Master is implied to be one of the oldest vampires in existence, and is trapped beneath the entrance to the Hellmouth, which lies underneath Sunnydale High School. The season opens and closes with a battle against him, and his presence hangs over the entire season. He is both entertaining and incredibly threatening, and a big part of Buffy's characterization is linked to her fear of him and the strength she must gain in order to defeat him. He is easily still one of the most memorable big bads of the series, and he elevates the entire first season. The premiere season also kickstarts the monsters as metaphors angle, which would continue throughout the series, and through this, Several episodes attempt to tackle more serious issues to varying degrees of success. The underrated episode The Pack dives into peer bullying 
pack mentality and the animal instincts of teenagers, while the somewhat clumsily handled nightmares portrays the horrifying but realistic abuse that kids suffer at the hands of sports coaches, while also delving into the psychology behind dreams and fears and how we handle them when they manifest. Along with laying the groundwork for future metaphors and writing devices, the first season gives us great foundation for future characterization with all its main characters, showing the traits and facets that would help build the amazing characters we get to know. And this starts with the Vampire Slayer herself, Buffy Ann Summers. Season 1 takes the thin and shaky characterization created for the Buffy Summers of the original movie and turns her into a much deeper and more relatable character, one whose compassion, drive to do the right thing, and unique and independent streak is made clear over the course of the season. When we first meet Buffy in the pilot, she is new to Sunnydale High and trying to find her footing after a disastrous end to her previous school year. We discover that her slaying duties led to her burning down her previous school's gym and being subsequently expelled, which also resulted in her losing her friends and feeling responsible for her parents' divorce. Despite this, and her initial unenthusiastic reaction to meeting Giles, her new watcher, we quickly get to see Buffy's sense of duty and responsibility when her new friends are put in danger and she realizes that she can't turn her back on her Slayer duties. Over the season, we see Buffy struggle with her Slayer identity and balancing her duties with her personal life. It's a somewhat familiar story, reminiscent of Clark Kent, and even referenced as such within the show, but Sarah Michelle Gellar's natural charisma and the nuanced writing behind the character makes Buffy effortlessly likable and endearing, and we root for her through all her trials and watch her grow over the season, as well as dealing with the long reach of the Master as his presence looms over her. Watching Buffy deal with her fears surrounding the Master makes her that much more human, and the way the show opens with her having to stop him from rising and ends with him finally achieving this goal shows the strength of the writing, even this early in the series. Buffy's character is also strengthened through this storyline, especially in the season's amazing finale, when she confronts her own mortality as well as the cost of her duty, choosing to sacrifice herself to stop the master and being able to triumph over him in the end, having faced her fears and overcome them. I may be dead, but I'm still pretty. Which is more than I can say for you. Buffy's dynamics in Season 1 are also well established and given a solid foundation. Her friendships with Willow and Xander are central to the show's appeal, and the bond they form lasts throughout the entire seven seasons. Xander's romantic feelings for Buffy are both sympathetic and a little pathetic, as are his feeble attempts to communicate them to her. And while Willow's feelings for Xander do threaten to form a cliché triangle, the first season subverts a lot of expectations with regards to this and allows the friendships rather than the romantic relationships to drive the show. That being said, Buffy's main romantic relationship with Angel is probably at its most fun and definitely its lightest this season, with the two given a somewhat snarky, mysterious start, and Angel's true nature being one of the biggest twists of the season. Outside of our protagonist, the early makings of the Scooby Gang are formed, and every character is given decent characterization, with building blocks for their future development. Willow's shy and awkward demeanor hides a much stronger and even darker backbone, which we're allowed to see glimpses of even this early, while Xander's clumsy and oafish exterior gives way to an incredibly brave character, who doesn't hesitate to throw himself into danger for those he cares about. Even resident rich bitch and implied airhead Cordelia Chase is given an episode in the spotlight in which her deeper and more sympathetic nature is revealed. Meanwhile, Giles' character is fun and endearing, as his out-of-touch personality struggles with the younger people he's forced to mentor. His fondness for and protectiveness over Buffy is evident even in this early season, and there are many touching scenes between them which help to add weight to their dynamic. The first season can definitely be cheesy, and it is most appealing to those who appreciate camp. Even then, some of the cheesier aspects can still be hard to swallow, such as the 
horribly dated vamp face transitions and grainy dustings, not to mention some of the terrible practical effects. But these are small flaws, and for those who give it a chance, Season 1 of Buffy is an eerie, at times effectively scary, and very entertaining premiere season. Fun episodes like The Witch and the criminally underrated The Puppet Show have fun playing with supernatural horror tropes, while more emotional episodes like Angel and Prophecy Girl show the depth of the series and the potential that it would build upon. So, the next time you're planning a Buffy rewatch, don't skip this season or brace yourself just to get through it, because I guarantee you, Buffy Season 1 is better than you remember. <laughs>